Hello, it's Phil Thatch and I'm here on my back porch on April the 1st, 2020. And I think today, uh, this afternoon, I'm gonna work on a little bit of bird photography in what used to be my bird studio. I had a, uh, I had a, a blind here, like a four foot by four foot blind that I could get in and set my camera up. And when I did, I could make photos of birds as they landed on this branch that I have festooned onto the back porch. Well, uh, the weather, because I never would take the blind down, I would just leave it here. Uh, and the weather destroyed two of them, and finally I gave up on that. And then you may recall I switched to, uh, I made a feeding station behind the house over here that I could make photos of from inside the house. I would open up the bay window and make photos of them. I've made a couple of videos from there, but it was just really, really dark. So I had to use my 500 F4 lens at F4. And when I was working from here, uh, I was too close for the 500 F4 lens. I was closer than its minimum focus distance. So that didn't work. Well, now what I'm going to do with no blind at all, I've got my 500 F4 set up way on the far side of my back deck. And I'm just, I don't know, maybe five inches beyond the minimum focus distance of the lens. And I've got the Z50, which is a DX sensor. And I have a 1.4 teleconverter. And I'm going to sit here in a chair with the, uh, with the giant lens and the tripod in front of me. I'm wearing a brown jacket, which may offer me some uh, blending in with the color of the porch and see if any of the birds will come to the uh, feeder station while I'm actually out here on the porch so I can get some photos of them. Okay, I've been sitting out here for well over an hour and it took a long time before the birds got acclimated to me being here. And I, you know, if I was any closer, I don't think they would have ever come, but I'm all the way against the back railing of this deck. And uh, the first birds that, that, would, uh, that were brave enough to come up here were house finches. And uh, you know, that's not really a very good get, but uh, eventually the uh, Carolina chickadees and tufted titmouse finally came uh, the Carolina Wren finally came out, and uh, also I think I got a, uh, a song sparrow, uh, not on the porch, but in the Leland Cypress that's a few feet behind, beyond the edge of the porch. I got one of those, and I think I even got a, uh, a chipping sparrow. So um, I think it's been worthwhile to come out here and, uh, and make some shots here in the bird studio with no blind and no hide. Some people call them a hide, some people call them a blind. Uh, they perform the same task. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you the pictures now. See what you think. So I sat there with no activity whatsoever for about 15 minutes and then the house finches started to show up and they stayed around quite a bit off and on. And my favorite picture that I made was this one in the Leland Cypress of this male. And then after about an hour, finally these Carolina chickadees started to show up ever so briefly. They would land on the branch, hit the feeder, get a seed, and leave. But these are some of my favorite birds, and it was worth the wait to get these photos. Nikon Z50, FTZ adapter, teleconverter 1.4 version 2, and the 500 F4 Super telephoto lens. That should be 500 millimeters for the lens and the teleconverter should take it to 700 and then the 1.5 on the DX sensor, 700 times 1.5 is 1,050 millimeters full frame equivalent focal length. All right, so here is a batch of three more Carolina chickadee pictures. I got more chickadee pictures than anything else. Well, I got actually more house finch pictures, but I don't like those. Here is the Carolina chickadee looking almost right at us. And I like the pattern of their feathers. And I really like at this close range how much detail you can get in the feathers. Now it's kind of taboo to make a picture. It's kind of against the rules to make a picture of a bird on the bird feeder. But I like this shot because it shows how tiny the chickadee is with that sunflower seed much, much bigger 
than its beak. Today I was fully manual except for white balance and autofocus. Here it is, it's the world's cutest bird, the tufted titmouse. Now these only came in at the very last few minutes before I uh, kind of quit making photos and this one was so close I couldn't get the entire bird in the frame. I, it's not cropped top to bottom at all. I did crop the width a little bit for composition. My focus mode I used today was single point autofocus. All right, this is a beautiful song sparrow in the Leland Cypress that's just a little ways back from my feeding station. What a beautiful bird. And I did mention earlier that I got a chipping sparrow and I did get one in the frame, but I wasn't happy with the photograph. Now here is maybe the second cutest bird in the world. I could be biased to the local birds, but this is the Carolina Wren. Such a incredibly loud bird when it makes its calls and screeches and all its wonderful sounds and really beautiful too. Okay, time for a little bonus footage. I had this video completely finished and it was gonna stop basically right here. And then that was from yesterday. And then this morning I went out, I was gonna to go to Volkswagen Wetlands and try to find the American Kestrel there. There's a pair of American Kestrel that have been seen by some of my friends, uh, Robert Scott, Joey Adams, Michael Daniel, all of those people have gotten photographs of the Kestrels. There's also some uh, Eastern Meadowlark there. And so I went there this morning with the idea of getting photographs of those and didn't get any of them. Uh, but those people that I just mentioned have all gotten great pictures and you can find their pictures on their Facebook page. I think Joy Adams is on there as Joy Mike Adams. And uh, Michael Daniel even has a mating uh, photograph on the top of this light that I took a picture of today. Uh, I just got the light. He got the light with the kestrel mating on top of it. But anyway, I got uh, I, I took a couple of pictures there and one of those I'll share with you. Um, and then I went to Harrison Bay State Park and didn't really see much there. I never got out of the car during any of this. I was, you know, I was in my rolling blind, but I got a picture at Harrison Bay State Park that I'll share with you. And then as I was pulling in the driveway, I got a picture uh, of a bird on my neighbor's fence. So I'll share those pictures with you now. Okay, so here are the bonus pictures from this morning. This one from Volkswagen Wetlands. This uh, eastern bluebird female is in a tree that the American kestrel, from what I understand, often land in, but all I got was this beautiful eastern bluebird female. And then after I left Volkswagen Wetlands, this is before you go into the actual Harrison Bay State Park, but it's very near it. I thought this uh, really long distance photograph of this beautiful great blue heron as it was fishing. And you can tell the location, the cypress trees in the background are the ones that I made photographs in a video a month or so ago. All of these photos are made with the exact same camera and lens combination as the photographs from yesterday on my back porch. And this one it was made just as I was pulling in the driveway. I saw this European starling on my neighbor's fence. So I just stopped in the middle of the road and set my flashers on and made a few photographs of this beautiful but invasive European starling. Okie dope. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're staying safe during all this coronavirus stuff. Although I'm recording this video on April 1st, it'll probably be late April before it comes out. So hope all is well with you and yours and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.